The Home Office staff have been told to make every other so work social event alcohol free amid concerns over inclusivity, The Telegraph is reporting. Now that's as bosses are advised to replace evening drinks with daytime socials and this is to appease the rise of Gen Z staff who don't drink. A report by the Work Foundation says that there's been a shift in attitudes towards the appropriateness of centering workplace socials, social activities outside of working hours and around the consumption of alcohol. So what do we make of this? Lowry, alcohol-free social events. I mean, you're going to get less bad behaviour. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, you know, I started my career on Fleet Street. Back in the day, we would have bars in their offices. I had a bar in my office. So, Elvino's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody drank, you know, all the time, it felt like it. Um, and that was fine back then. Now, of course, everywhere is cake in offices, so it's an unhealthy and a completely different way. <laughs> People are just, like, obese <laughs> rather than drunk. Uh -huh. um, I think what's interesting is as a kind of young, single, childless person, I loved going out for drinks after work with my colleagues. It's great. What it hadn't occurred to me is what happens when you, for example, have children or are caring responsibilities and you actually can't socialise after work and you definitely can't stagger home having had one too many glasses of wine. So actually, I think this is a long time coming, this idea that one, you should have at least some of the socials should be alcohol free and two, they should be within working hours and not in the evenings because otherwise Otherwise, there's a kind of career progression that comes from meeting the rest of the team in a social environment, which if you can't attend those events, either because you don't drink, say, for example, for religious grounds or because you've got just for a health, family at home, or you, you, you miss out on that. And that's, that's a, an indirect form of discrimination. I do wonder whether you said deals were made on the golf course and then we decided that that wasn't really appropriate. Then we started socialising with work colleagues outside of office. That meant women could get involved in that, slightly more inclusive. Maybe we do need to bring it out of the pub now and include people that don't drink because that population is getting bigger and bigger. You'll be surprised to know that I'm all for the pub. But, <laughs> I mean, pubs for a start, I, I agree that it shouldn't totally be just like uh, geared around things like the pubs. But, I mean, there's so many uh, options of non-alcoholic drinks now uh, everywhere you go that it's not... It's not like you go somewhere and you, all you can drink is alcohol. The thing that I found weird, I think the Home Office was suggesting things like picnics in the day. Well, uh, they also say picnics and it's bring your own. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but when someone starts with a bring your own, it ends with bottle. Absolutely. But they're saying that this is 100% alcohol. But also free. the idea of sort of power networking at a picnic in the middle of the day, it just seems weird. But I mean, you don't, it's... don't make deals cross legged. <laughs> no, not really, like on a blanket. Like... <laughs> Part of it is supposed to be about your employer picking, picking up the bill, isn't it? So they, the point is, it's, it's free. So they mm. should be providing. Like, if they set up an amazing picnic, which we could go to, that would be great. I mean, the real the problem is, is obviously in the old days when you were on Fleet Street and, and I, I occasionally had an office job, you know, there was the long lunch. That was quite fun. Uh, and that meant you could still get home, even though you'd stagger home at the end of the evening. But, yeah, it's probably not the most uh, responsible thing. So I, I think it's... I get what people are saying. Certainly a lot of my kids' friends don't drink nearly as much as we used to when we were kids. It's definitely like a shift in... But also, if, if you're Muslim, you may not want to be in a pub. That's yeah, the that's problem, isn't it? So that would then preclude them being able to attend any of those events. Yeah. Because if you are at the pub or you're going for that Friday afternoon drink after work, there's two issues in this. When you're doing the Friday after work drink, a lot of that is run by the workers and they're deciding that they're going for a drink and they're just looking for anyone that wants yeah. to join them. Sometimes it's not as organised as or prescribed as you might think. But you get to know your, your colleagues more, you get to know your boss more, you, be, you, you bed in relationships a oh, little bit. It's definitely better. a network so, thing. So if you're not doing that, there might yes. be less of a chance. What about the agrophobics, though? I mean, agrophobics, <laughs> they're not going to be able to go to the picnics, well, they're not are even they? going to the office. I'll tell, you, yeah. I'll, tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you a very quick story, which is that I was working on a TV show with somebody else, and my children were very young at the time, very, very young. So I was having to either bring the baby with me to work, which they wouldn't let me do for insurance. Because so, of your bar. They wouldn't let... <laughs> this is, well, is post-bar. Yeah. And Or I was having to rush back because I was having to pay for every penny with, with childcare. Mm. So my male colleague, of course, did have children, but he had a wife who did all of that stuff. And when push came to shove, he was able to create networks for himself that didn't benefit me, let's put it that way. So yeah. actually, I saw in action what happens. Well, it's not, it's not an old boys network. It's a kind of network of people who are able to socialise around alcohol. I, th that's I, very powerful. I think that's really interesting. I did think it was more a boys club, but you're quite right. It is actually. And it probably does tend to be slightly more 
boys in that way. But it well, is I about think it's people young that. Women as well. yeah. yeah, it's about people that don't have responsibilities. Yeah. Isn't but it? certainly, so, um, once so if you want to combat ages, then that's one of the ways to do it to stop that kind that's of pun. So we yeah. we had fun, but now it's got to stop. Is what we're <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Close the barn yeah. door behind you. <laughs> Jo from Edinburgh, what's your view on this one? Do you think that we need to ban alcohol from work socials? Hi, good morning, uh, Storm. Good morning, Larry and Don. Morning. Morning. How are you? Yeah. Hey, no, well, I think uh, Storm, uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm the, very good. The only pressure how about your work and everything, you know, stuff like that. I think, you know, banning booze would be a bad idea because people come out of their shell, they're a bit sort of shy, you know, they can talk and have a laugh, you know? That's You're right, Joe, but we all know certain people that just shouldn't come out their shell. Yeah, sometimes people come right out of their shell. <laughs> <laughs> and end up getting sacked over it on occasion. I mean, Christmas parties, for example, they are notorious for people just getting far too carried away and, and embarrassing themselves. In Photocopier ways. art, I think we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to be where it's organised, I suppose, at the end of the day, you know. I'm a recovering alcoholic 11 years, so, I mean, it doesn't bother me when I go to... Uh, I'm a mental health nurse as well, so it doesn't bother me to go to these worries. I can still drink my black cum and water and I'm quite happy. Well, that's really interesting because actually for yourself, you're probably going to struggle a little bit more than the Gen Zers that we're doing this for who just don't drink. Um, but for you to be in a pub, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure that would be a little bit more tricky, I imagine. Wouldn't you find it easier or better if work dues were organised so that it wasn't so centred around alcohol? For example, if you went bowling, some people could have a beer, some people could have a glass of wine, but it's not the centre, it's not the focus of, of the event. That's a different uh, can of worms, that uh, storm, because if you had a beer and whatever, a glass of wine, and you're bowling, the ball, the ball could end up there at the end of the... Well, <laughs> I mean, it's really... Right. You could have some drunken <laughs> bowling injuries, yeah. all sorts of stuff. <laughs> exactly, and it... yeah. Dumb spot on there, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, also, if you go bowling, suddenly it's all the sporty bowlers in the, in the office are getting the yeah. precedent. Whereas, you know, people that are good at drinking oh, are not being allowed oh. to get out there. I so. love bowling, but I still put on, you know, the strips either side. That no, the you don't. The bumpers. No, oh, don't. yeah. It's the Please only tell me you don't use the little to... the rolling thing yeah. as well. On occasion. What? On occasion. Why not? It doesn't. I... There's not an age restriction no, on them, Dob. But I don't tend to have any drinks when I go bowling, I suppose. But, Joe, but my point still stands. Wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it make you more comfortable if you could enjoy an afternoon with your colleagues where it wasn't just drinks at a table where, where there was other things that you could focus on. A nice picnic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, Storm, I could come on, yes, I hear what you're saying, exactly. But at the end of the day, you know, people, you don't know what team environment your work is, you know, and it's like people keep themselves to the cell to do their job. But when they come together, drink seems to make people more happier, I think, maybe. It's just have to be well, abused, you know. Happier until moderation. they're not so happy, to you, as, as you probably are well aware. Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody's every different, isn't it? Opinion. Uh, Opinions like noses have all got one, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Jay, you're a very, very <laughs> upbeat ex alcoholic. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Don. No <laughs> staying, away, staying away from the booze is obviously working for you, so continue it. Thank you so much, Jay. Jay, though, does have a point. When it comes to sometimes, how do we put this? When you're at work, you portray a, a certain individual, a certain person, a certain persona, and maybe it's sometimes quite nice to relax and let uh, another person come out, maybe a, a truer version of yourself I don't, after work. I don't think a person who's drunk is a true, truer version of themselves, or if they are not for good reason. If, if the point, okay, so we live in a kind of lean, a lean, a lean and mean economy. Um, companies are struggling. If the point about these kind of socials is because it bonds the team together and therefore increases their ability to do their job really well, if, if we're saying that's what this mm. is about, then companies need to actually invest in their own time and actually providing things that help every Everybody to achieve. If it's just about, oh, well, somebody wants to go for a piss up, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? I think that companies should be thinking about how to help every single member of the team but isn't um, that... achieve their potential. And if that means bonding them together as a team, then you do the, you know, group cake uh, workshop or you but, do I mean, the, come you know, on. I mean, that stuff I, I sort of agree with the, with, the, with, the, with the theory behind that. But, I mean, to find something that makes everyone happy 
and inclusive yeah. is almost impossible and will probably be one of the dullest events yes. you can ever go to. So, I mean, what, what so are you doing? I mean, you're yeah. saying a cake bake. I don't no, want to... Well, people, that kind of thing happens for, for team building. But, but that I would freak think, me out. I can't bake. That I, would I really... Do wonder whether, I do wonder whether I, I'm mentally crossing over two different things here. So when we're looking at the civil service, they're being pressured to do their work social events. So these are things organised by the bosses yeah. and organised by the company. That is slightly different, is yeah. it not, to... It's Friday, it's after work, I'm knackered, I just want to sit and relax with a glass of wine, anyone else fancy coming along yes. with me? Which and is done fine. on the hoof with anyone in the room. And should we, but should we still ban that? Because no, but if, actually I, that's I, well, you can't ban that, can you? That makes it even more important that other events yeah. within work hours that are potentially alcohol free are organised to, to prevent those networks, the down the pub network, being the only network available. Or Friday night, you just say, look, two things happening tonight. Uh, there's to the pub uh, for some beers, or we go to the bowling alley uh, for a vegan evening. Help, but you know all the fun people are going to the pub. It's the same I, as when you, you said go that. I couldn't the possibly school. comment. But but it's on. always the best Hang conversation but happens but outside. Then, with that then go to the pub. That still <laughs> excludes people who've got children who have to go home to their children. It's got to be within working hours. Okay, My we're going to put a uh, play zone in as well. There's going to be a vegan like, play zone know, area. On Wednesdays, that you finish, you know, you have a three-hour lunch break, and we provide an amazing lunch from a local restaurant. That would be a way to have people know. I just think I think life is getting really complicated now. I think it was much easier just to go to the pub, but... Yes, I mean, yes, it probably is becoming more complicated as we try and include I think, everybody I think in. I think also your, your I just, experience yeah. of, those, of those pub visits are different depending, depending on where you are in the hierarchy. If you're the one at the top, there comes a point halfway through the evening where well, people have, have had quite a few drinks. And they, they start say, telling you what they Now, think. Yeah. I was hoping to bump into you, so that's the point at which you need to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And they want you to pay. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, also, who is paying for it? Because if you meet after work on a Friday, presumably everyone's paying their yeah. rounds and they're paying yeah. for their yeah. own drinks. The boss doesn't yeah. need to worry about that, whereas if the boss is paying, he maybe feels, or she maybe feels, more responsible for the conduct of the individual. This involved. is so complicated. I know, it's wild. This is why okay. I've enjoyed being a freelancer and not, not going into <laughs> offices. So we've got a few messages online. Rimmel on X says, sounds like a good idea, makes it inclusive to people who don't drink or are not drinking as they are driving. Another group of people well, that... I think, fair enough, you're not going to go to the yeah. pub and then drive home. I mean, I know yeah. people did in the old days, but, people, yeah. People did, some people do, and they shouldn't. Uh, Paul on Facebook says, to be more inclusive, it shows a real narrative behind this change as the endless attacks on those who like a drink uh, who like to drink alcohol continues. Also, Paul feels victimised in yeah. this. Do you think there's a victimisation? Are you feeling the same way as Paul, or...? I'm not because I don't work in an office and when I want to go to the pub, it'll be Monday morning if I fancy it. So <laughs> I'm going to be doing that. But yeah, I, I do get that. I mean, in the same way that I think people that don't drink probably feel victimised, if not victimised, but probably feel excluded mm -hmm. if everyone's off to the pub and they can't really do that. Yeah, but I think if well, everyone suddenly starts having these, uh, you know, ridiculous vegan picnics... Uh, then possibly uh, the people go to the pub. You'd love a vegan marginalized. picnic, wouldn't you? Well, I, I'm a vegetarian, so yeah. I wouldn't mind a vegan picnic. But Paul, you could still go to the vegan picnic and then have your uh, beer at home. Would you have alcohol at the vegan picnic? I, I'm from Glasgow, so I would. You but would. That's just a personal <laughs> choice. Each to their own.